Beach. I'm the principal here at Gainesville High School. Um, thanks to all of our families who've uh, joined us this evening. Um, I'll start with a few quick introductions and uh, get into uh, the purpose for this evening, and then we'll, we'll get straight into the information that we have uh, for our families. Hopefully it's a, a blend of families that are new to Gainesville High School and uh, students who are starting in their first year here, uh, just eager to, to start the school year the right way, and uh, some returning families with questions that um, we're, we're confident we're going to be able to answer most, if not all of them, during the course of today. Um, let me introduce uh, some of our administrative team, or in fact, our administrative team. So again, I'm, I'm Neil Beach. I'm the principal here at Gainesville High School. Uh, in no order other than the order in which they appear on my screen, uh, I'll introduce Troy Washington, assistant principal. Mr. Washington, can you say hi? Good evening, everyone. Isabella Yearwood, a new assistant principal. Hi, everyone. We've got Andrew Barton, assistant principal. Good evening, everybody. And Amy Manival, one of our new assistant principals. Hi, everybody. Uh, Megan Pomfret is our school counseling director. Hello. Dr. Robert Scott is our pathways program coordinator. Good evening, folks. Thanks for coming out. And Adam Daniels is uh, a new administrative intern that we have on our staff. Hello, good evening, everybody. And Adam's returning from being a teacher at Gainesville last year. So that's the team. Um, the, the goal for tonight was really just to provide some reminders, updates, um, hopefully useful information as our families start to make that final approach towards the school year. Um, the goal is to reduce anxiety, not increase anxiety, just to answer any questions that, that we feel um, might be of use. When we sent out the registration link for tonight, we did survey our community asking, what, what is it you want to know about? So we've, uh, we've tried to embed as, as many of those questions as we can into tonight's um, presentation. Um, we have a Q&A feature that the chat feature is turned off tonight, but the Q&A feature down at the bottom of the screen uh, allows uh, users to type questions. Um, as I'm going through the uh, the information tonight, and then I pass off to Mrs. Pomfret and Dr. Scott, um, the rest of the team's going to be doing the best they can to keep up with, uh, with Q&A. So we'll answer as many questions as we can. When the webinar ends, we'll probably spend two or three minutes just closing out any questions that remain open, and then we'll move on from that point. As ever, the building's open during the work week. Um, so for whatever reason, we don't get to your question tonight. Uh, you're welcome to call us. Any one of us is happy to answer any questions you've got. Uh, and uh, always with the goal of supporting our students as best we can as we move towards the school year so that they can be comfortable and successful at Gainesville High School. So without any further ado, I'm going to share my screen and uh, start going through the information that we have. Um, so here we go. Welcome and introduction. Um, we've got a little bit of what to expect in 22-23, some supports for our students, and again, a reminder to submit, submit questions through the, the Q&A feature. Uh, looking back at the, the previous school year and forward to the coming school year, what, what a year last year was. Obviously, as a brand new school, our first year oper of operation was, uh, was interesting. It was always going to be interesting. We had a lot of fun. Um, I think there were some significant wins, and, and despite the backdrop of uh, coming out of a pandemic, um, I think we got a lot accomplished, and our, our students were remarkable last year. Um, full athletic program um, got off the ground last year. Many clubs and activities uh, were started and, and, and particularly active as we got into the second semester of the school year. Uh, more clubs and activities coming this year. Several student publications and performing arts events um, occurred and were released during the school year, uh, again, with strong reviews, um, strong student participation. Um, we're, uh, we're still trolling through a little bit of data as it comes in, but our students perform very, very well um, on, adv on advanced placement assessments, PSAT and SOL tests. And uh, that, that, those metrics were comparing against uh, national averages, state averages, and then uh, school system averages. And we're very proud of the work that our students did in those areas. And uh, the goal, um, among other things, is to move towards a, a normal school year 
this coming school year. Obviously, last year, uh, always being our first year, was going to present um, some some challenges and bumps to get over as we set um, norms and uh, systems for how we operate, how we do business, how we support students. Um, we went through two years of heavy heavy hiring, um, one year for our inaugural year, and then we've hired over sixty five staff. Uh, for this coming school year as a result of the growth uh, that we'll experience in our student body. Just to give you some context, our student enrollment last year was 1,400, and this coming school year, we're going to be right around 2,000 students. So we've hired, obviously, to accommodate that growth. Uh, let's start with the movement towards normal. And, and uh, I want to try to start on a positive as opposed to a negative, but cell phone use last year, I will describe as abnormal. We came out of the pandemic and students being at home, um, students were heavily reliant on their cell phones to the point that it was a distraction in our classrooms. And that's not unique to Gainesville High School. I would say that's a nationwide phenomenon. Um, so parents, uh, I'm asking for your help. Students, I'm encouraging you to adhere to, to these expectations. Students, you can use your cell phones at Gainesville High School, in the hallways, before and after school, and at lunch. Students, please do not use your cell phone in classrooms. Uh, your teachers will gently remind you to put your cell phones away when the lesson begins uh, and keep them away for the duration of the lesson. We have one-to-one -one opportunities for learning in the sense that our students will have a laptop and be able to access all of the learning tools they need from that laptop. If a teacher has a reason for a cell phone to be used to support student learning and collaboration, then our teachers will say to students, now, now's a good time to use your cell phone if you, if you have one available. Otherwise, we're gonna encourage students to leave cell phones out of sight, out of mind. Um, if a student um, is struggling to adhere to that expectation, then a teacher will ask a student to put their cell phone to one side to charge or put it in a, in a, a cell phone caddy uh, till the end of the class period, and then uh, give the phone back at the end of the class. We'll remind students that we should not, they should not have cell phones being used in use in locker rooms or bathrooms for obvious reasons, privacy concerns. Um, so again, if a student leaves a, a classroom to use the restroom, just leave, leave the cell phone in the classroom. We don't need it in our, in our bathrooms. Um, another area that we're, we're, we're hoping to, to move towards a more normal platform is students getting to school and class on time. Um, that's one of the things that I think a couple of years of um, or a year and a half of time at home impacted students' habits. Um, so students were really going to be focusing on encouraging uh, good on-time attendance for every one of our classes, starting with first period. Um, students, you, you get the, um, the break, if you will, of three tardies per quarter per class. Um, after the fourth tardy, teachers will um, start to assign um, other disciplinary outcomes. Um, but students, please get to class on time. There are two things that we're really going to be working, out, working on at Gainesville High School this school year as we move towards normal. Okay, let's move beyond that. Important dates. Um, the, there's a lot of information on this slide. Um, uh, parents, your, your child, our students will receive the first day of school. Uh, a folder with a bunch of QR codes on the folder. And those QR co codes will take you back to pieces of information that we think are relevant. One of those pieces of information will be a year at a glance calendar. Um, so this is a, a, a snapshot of that information that again, we'll, we'll provide to students on the first day of school. But our new students, new to Gainesville High School, obviously most of which will be freshmen. We have our new student orientation on August 18th. Um, it's from eight until noon. Um, students can be dropped off by, by their parents or ride a, an express bus service that'll be provided. Uh, but this is just for new students. First day of school is August 22. Back to school night, August 31. Uh, and then obviously we've listed some other um, dates that, that may be irrelevant on the calendar uh, as we move through the fall. Bell schedule. Um, our bell schedule, I start and, and end times are the same as last year. My first class starts at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, our last class ends at 2.10 in the afternoon. And we're on an, uh, an odd even rotation. So period one meets every day from 7.30 to 8.26. And then periods two, four, and six will meet, followed by three, five, and seven. The first day of school 
August 22nd will be periods one, two, four, and six. And then we'll start the rotation from there. The students will be assigned a lunch based on which class they're in during period four or five. And uh, we'll publish that the first day of school so our students know which lunch shift to go to during that period four and five block. Attendance questions. Um, on our webpage, we have an attendance link. You can see in this graphic where the link is at the top of the Gainesville High School um, homepage. Um, if parents wish to excuse an, absent, an absence, we ask parents to use the Parent View app. There is a, a module in the Parent View app that allows uh, parents to report all day absence. However, for early dismissal, um, go back to the Gainesville webpage and fill out the request link um, for early dismissal or call the school. We're happy to take phone calls if uh, parents wish to request an early dismissal. Any student who arrives late to school will come through door number one and sign in through uh, the, the main entrance desk as they arrive. Students can bring a note at that time if, uh, if there's a reason for the, the tardy to be excused or the late arrival to be excused. Supplies and laptops. Uh, one of the most frequently asked questions we had in the survey was what, what's the supply list? And the answer is almost nothing. If students can bring some paper in a binder or a composition notebook, pencil and pen, that's, that's about all students would need to bring the first uh, several days of school. Uh, our math department has calculators for all of our students. However, if a student wishes to buy a calculator, the, the TI, Texas Instruments 84, is the calculator that, that uh, we're using in our math classrooms. And we have an online app called Desmos that um, is also used in our math classrooms. But really, no, no real need for students to go out and buy a calculator before the first day of school. That, that's what we will use if you do. Some of our elective courses, art is the only one that stands out, may ask students to buy um, a notebook, a sketchbook, um, we have those in-house for students to purchase if they want to, but again, students can get into their art classroom, um, work with their art teacher to see what the specific needs are, and they'll have time to purchase anything that's unique to their art class. The, the reality is um, pencil, uh, pen, paper, we should be good to go for the start of the, the school year. Laptops will be distributed to students during the, the first period on the first day of the school year. Um, students may choose to use their own device. Just know that we will not be providing technology support to those devices. If a student has an iPad or a, or a Mac, for example, um, our, our expertise is in the devices that we're assigning to our students. Um, so students, you'll have a device provided by the school. You don't have to take that device. Um, you can use your own, but that will be provided first period on day one. Uh, locker numbers and combinations will also be provided within the first couple of days of school by uh, uh, first block teachers. The reality is very few students use lockers during the school day, um, but they will be provided for students who, who wish to use them. Health and PE, um, students please bring athletic clothing for health and PE to change into. We do expect all of our students to participate in the PE uh, module of the class. Um, we don't have a specific uniform, however, that students must wear, just appropriate for physical activity. Uh, students, please, please do bring a lock for your PE locker. Uh, combination lock would be good so that you can lock away uh, personal belongings um, and items that you bring to school during your PE class. Meals. Um, last year, all students could um, or had access to meals for free. Um, the, the waiver that was provided um, for our students to receive free lunches last year has expired. Uh, Gainesville High School is not a Title I school, so we do not have grant monies uh, that are paying for all of our school lunches. The normal conditions for students being eligible for free and reduced price lunches, however, do apply. So we encourage our families uh, to go to our food services uh, page on the Prince William County website and fill out paperwork for free and reduced price lunch if, uh, if they believe they're eligible. Um, so some of our students will qualify for free and reduced lunches. Otherwise, uh, the school bucks, school bucks platform will be used for families to uh, contribute to meal accounts so that students can use their ID code to, to draw down um, as they purchase meals in school. Obviously, students can bring packed lunches. 
uh, one of the things I will stress both now and when I talk about school security is we ask uh, students and families not to make uh, food deliveries to the school. And by food deliveries, I mean DoorDash, Uber Eats, et cetera. We don't have the staff to um, accept deliveries and then hand deliver them to students during the school day. It's a disruption. Um, it also can become a security concern if uh, some of these meal delivery services go to doors that, that are um, locked during the school day. So families, we ask you, please do not send uh, food delivery services to the school. Parents, if you wish to bring a, um, a, a lunch as a treat to, to your child, um, we want to work with you. You're welcome at our school, at your school. Um, we're happy to reconnect you with your child during their lunch period to make sure they can um, grab lunch from you. We just ask that we don't have deliveries of food to the school for reasons I've, uh, I've described. Transportation, um, school bus routes will be published around August 16th, and they'll first hit the, the student view and parent view apps. So students and parents can view that information. We encourage our students to really um, embrace the student view app because that's where student schedules will be published and where their bus routes will be published. Um, so if students during the school day think, I don't, I can't remember what my bus number is, rather than having to track down an adult at the end of the school day, it will be in the app when they go to the bus loop and it's gonna make dismissal so much easier the first few days of school. Uh, the first day of school, our students should follow the schedule that they can see in student view, and then we'll give them a paper copy of their formal uh, schedule to follow for that first day of school. And I know Mrs. Pomfret's gonna talk a little bit more about that. Um, in the afternoon, we've we've learned we'll have five or six uh, double bus runs. What that means is um, five or six of our buses will leave to drop off one group of students, then come back to pick up another group of students that is waiting for that bus to, to also take them home. So we'll have anywhere in the region of 100 to 150 students, I predict, that will be waiting for that second bus run. And typically that wait time is in the region of a half hour. Um, sometimes as long as 40 minutes for students to uh, get picked up by the, the second bus run. And that is driven by mostly the, the shortage of bus drivers that we're experiencing nationwide in public education. When students arrive, they'll arrive from buses in the bus loop and come straight into the school through um, entrances four, five, and six. And the building will be open at 7 a.m. Generally, we keep our doors locked and closed prior to 7 a.m., uh, because 7 a.m. is when we start to staff the building for, from a supervision perspective. Uh, student drivers will get into parking permits in just a moment. Oh, one thing I will say, um, currently there are no plans for activity buses. We had a limited activity bus service two days a week last year. Um, between the shortage of bus drivers and the, the very limited use of that service. Um, it was underutilized by, uh, by our students. It was used by somewhere in the region of 10 to 20 students um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, for much of the school year. Um, we're, we're not gonna run the activity bus service at the beginning of the school year. We're happy to revisit uh, parents for planning purposes. Um, that's not something that we're planning on running um, at the start of the school year. Uh, the Kiss and Ride line um, is for uh, parents who drop students um, in the morning. Um, parents, please know that um, the, the drop-off line at Gainesville High School is very popular. And uh, we the, the only advice I can give you is, is get here early. Uh, students, be ready to get out of the car safely and quickly when you arrive. Um, I have your, your property with you so you don't have to run around to the trunk of the car to retrieve all of your items. Uh, and parents, please please pull all the way forwards in, in groups to um, door three. Um, it's right at the front of that, that drop line so that we can move cars on quickly. We'll have three or four staff out the first few days of school to make sure that we sort of keep everything moving. But I do anticipate that this can be a, a little bit of a, a log jam um, in the Kiss and Ride line in the morning. So get here early, be patient. Uh, just try to follow the direction of our security team as you arrive. Parking permits, uh, student drivers, uh, we, we do charge across Prince William County Schools, $100 uh, 
uh, parking permit fee for the year. Uh, Mr. Wall, our head of security, has had a couple of days of uh, sales of parking permits for our senior class. Um, everybody now is welcome to uh, come back on the 10th and the 19th um, between 10 and 12 and 4 and 6. He's selling permits in the amphitheater, so there's a, a loop around that uh, drivers can, can park on the curb and, and just run up to the amphitheater, grab a parking pass, and then leave. Um, you can continue to buy permits during the school year. Uh, just come to the main office and we'll be happy to give students the paperwork necessary to buy a permit. Um, I'd be surprised if we sold out of parking permits this school year. Um, I would imagine next year there'll be a little bit more at a premium than this year, but um, uh, they're the dates, times, and locations of where they'll be available. Uh, speaking of security, we, we had a couple of people say they wanted to know about safety at school. A um, couple of things I'll, I'll state. We have three full-time security staff at Gainesville High School who um, help with uh, traffic. They help with general security. They, they check all of our doors at the beginning of the school day. And then during the school day, um, all of our school doors will remain locked. Uh, door one is our main entrance, and that's where all guests will come in. Uh, through the um, telecom system to, to buzz access into the building. Uh, we do have cameras throughout the building and, uh, and the exterior of the building that uh, we use as we need to. Um, on grounds, we'll have one um, school resource officer, one principal and county police officer is assigned to us. He has uh, a, an office in our building uh, close to the main entrance and is, uh, is routinely out and about during the school day. Um, we, for security reasons, will ask that we don't get food deliveries to our school. That is one of the main reasons we, we ask for that to be adhered to, as well as the, the distraction it, uh, it can eat into as far as staff uh, running food backwards and forwards, etc. cetera. Um, we've talked about cell phones. Um, we're, we're asking our students to, to be respectful in terms of where and when they use cell phones during the school day. Obviously, we, we're asking students not to use cell phones in their bathrooms and locker rooms. And also we're, we're asking students to be respectful of um, only going to bathrooms for the purpose of using them as bathrooms. Uh, students, we, we, we strongly discourage going to bathrooms just to hang out and have conversations. There's no need for that. So that's also going to be an area of focus. Uh, many of our bathrooms will be locked uh, prior to the school day begins up until 7.30. Uh, the bathrooms that will be open will be in the commons areas, the red and gray cafeteria and then we'll open bathrooms for general student use um, when teachers can assign students a pass um, during normal business hours between 7.30 and uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. So that's just a little bit of a security overview. Um, going into communication tools, um, we have the, the Gainesville High School webpage. That's where we're gonna warehouse um, all of the important information for our families. The year at a glance calendar will be there as well as news topics. Um, parent and student view, I can't stress enough the need for parents and students to engage in that app. There is a lot of very useful information and a lot of up-to-date information that's gonna be relevant for our families. The Cardinal Connections is a weekly emailed newsletter that we'll, we'll send out just with general hints, tips, overview, um, important information, and then, and then overviews as, as we move through the year. Uh, and we have a presence on social media. We'll, we'll try to push good news and remind us through Twitter and Facebook. Um, the note that I will make, however, is Prince William County Schools positively is migrating to some upgraded platforms. We're, we're, we're migrating as we speak uh, across the school system to a new web platform. That migration is, um, is a big uh, heavy lift. Um, if you think about the large volume of data information that's going to go from one web platform to another, I'm sure there'll be some, some bugs. Um, when you move big systems, you generally get big bugs to try and fix. Um, so we'll, we'll work as quickly as we're able to continue to update the new web platform. But there could be a little bit of a lag as we move this week into next in our capacity to really keep it up to date. So please know that if there's any must have information that we are unable to get up to our web page. Uh, we'll email it out. We'll make sure we push it out in other ways um, as we go through the, the next few days um, during that migration. 
we're also migrating to a new messaging system. So the school messaging platform that we currently use will at least be in place uh, through the end of September. Uh, the new messaging system, although it's not live yet, will allow for messages to hit um, in the form of text messages. And my understanding is there will be translation services embedded in that communication tool. So we're excited about that. Um, more to come when we're trained and when that, that application goes live. But for right now, um, School Messenger is the, the platform that we will continue to use for at least the next six or eight weeks and maybe a little bit longer than that. Okay, some key people to know. This is one of the tools that we hope to have on the web page. Um, this PowerPoint slide um, deck will also be uploaded to the web page. Um, I know that um, the font is in incredibly small on here, so just know that you'll see it in, in other ways. But the one thing I really want to stress or convey in this, um, in this with this graphic is that we divide our alphabet of students up uh, amongst our system principals and uh, Mr. Daniels, our admin intern, for support, disciplinary purposes. Um, IEP meetings and intervention team meetings. So uh, parents, if you have a, an administrative um, inquiry, then you can go to one of our um, assistant principals or admin intern by alphabet. We have four uh, admin, administrative assistants who work with those administrators. And again, they will help um, with um, provision of information, schedule meetings, returning phone calls, you name it. Again, based on alphabet, our school counselors have um, caseloads based on alphabet. And again, the counselor names and uh, uh, letter of the alphabet that they serve are listed there. And we'll show that list again further down the line. Um, what I will stress is we do have uh, an attendance officer, um, sorry, an attendance um, assistant. Her name is Joanna Portillo. And she deals with all of our late arrival, early release requests and general attendance processing. So she has a, an office uh, just off our main office and, and helps with a lot of the attendance uh, processing that, that occurs on a day-to-day -day basis. Other people to know, um, hopefully over time, we'll be able to put names and faces together. Uh, John Treadwell is our special education department chair, uh, heavily involved in a lot of... Uh, uh, eligibility and IEP meetings. Jackie Crookton's our school librarian, our lead school librarian. Uh, we, we now have two librarians uh, as we move into the new school year. Dan Nemero is our instructional technology coach and has a lot to do with uh, coaching our teachers and students about Canvas use, um, our web page, and other technology platforms. Justin Holly is our point of contact for distribution of devices and tracking devices in the building, making sure that hardware is, uh, is up and running. Um, so he'll be uh, coordinating the, the distribution of student one-to-one -one technologies. Uh, Kelly Kirkendall is our ESOL department chair and uh, Catherine May is our athletic trainer. New student orientation. Uh, I've started talking about this. This is specifically for students new to Gainesville High School, mostly our freshman class. Um, eight to noon, um, students will have you uh, join a general session um, just after you arrive. From there, we'll let you follow your seven period day, so you'll get to meet each of your teachers. Um, we'll have a break in the middle so you can meet with your school counselor, and then we'll have an activity fair so you can connect with um, students and sponsors from our clubs and activities clubs, activities, and athletics. So one of the questions was, how, do, how does my child get involved? And this is one opportunity for our new students. Um, at back to school night, we will replicate this for, format. So we'll have an activity fair where parents and students will be able to roll around, meet coaches, meet with club and activity sponsors, and again, get more information about the things that are available in terms of extracurricular uh, activities at Gainesville High School. So there'll be those two opportunities. We will continue to publish an up-to-date list of all, all of our club and activity sponsors so students know who to go to with questions as we move through the school year. Um, there is an, an optional parent session for parents of new students that same day. So parents, if you drop your child off, please let them go. Please let them be independent that day. We do not want you to follow your child through the school day 
um, that they have for them on August 18th during their orientation. Parents, after students go out into the building, will ask you to come in through door 32. That's the door closest to our tennis courts. Um, and around 8.45, we'll start the parent session. And that'll be me going over some of the information again that we have tonight, but then also trying to answer any questions that our new parents have as we um, welcome you to the Gainesville High School uh, community. So parents, that's an optional session for you in the auditorium. Athletics and activities. We have a separate web page that has all of our schedules, um, information about um, tryouts. There's a registration for any student who wishes to participate in athletics where students get information about their uh, completing their physical requirements, uh, concussion training, um, declaring interest in general in athletics. Um, obviously, our full season has begun. Uh, tryouts have occurred. We're into the preseason and um, getting close to scrimmages in some sports. I, I think golf has already competed, if my memory serves me. Um, so winter sports registration will open in October, but the information will be there and warehoused for our families to access as they need to. So that's the GainesvilleCardinals.com webpage for athletics purposes. Um, list of upcoming events, uh, golf, uh, Prince William Golf Course on the 22nd, field hockey, volleyball, lacrosse. Our first varsity football game is on uh, September 9. And at the, the new student orientation, each of our students will get a ticket to the first home uh, football game, but also to uh, another home event. Uh, I think the ticket says volleyball, but uh, freshmen and new students will allow you to redeem that really at any of our home events. Um, early in uh, early in the school year. Okay, this time I'm going to pass uh, pass the mic over to Miss Pomfret as she uh, talks about our student support services, um, school counseling office, and associated services uh, as we move through the the evening. Thank you, Mr. Beach. So yes, the student support um, team is here to help your child through with their health and their well-being just to make sure that they're able to, to learn and to grow while they're here at Gainesville High School. This does include some important positions like our attendance officer. We have a new Horizon counselor who works um, with some mental health and some substance abuse issues are available here at school. We also have our registrar, our counseling administrative assistants, our school counselors. I'm gonna go over that in just one moment. Our school nurse, Smith Smith, um, if you do have any health plans or medications that need to be dropped off, she is available next week. Um, feel free to reach out to her. Her email is on the Gainesville High School website. And we also have a school psychologist and a school social worker that are here to support um, your student and your family. Mr. Beach, do you mind going to the next slide, please? All right, so our school counselors, we're very excited. We have some new members of our school counseling team this year. Um, Mr. Baxter is coming to us from OP. He's going to be covering the alphabet A through B. Ms. Sigmund was here with us last year. She now has the alphabets C through E. Um, and, and I apologize for our rising um, ninth grade parents. We do um, caseloads by last name. We don't break down by grade level. We break down by last name. So you just look for your last name and that would be their student, your, your student school counselor. Ms. Azaz is F through JA. She is new to Gainesville High School. Ms. Salvo is JE to MAR. She was with us last year. Ms. Green is also new to Gainesville High School. Uh, last names are M -A M -A -S, excuse me to PI. Mr. Baird is PJ to SN. He was with us last year. Ms. Epps is last name SO to Z. And we're very, very excited. We're going to have a college and career counselor this year, starting with us a little bit later in September. Ms. Harris is going to be dealing specifically with college and career support for our students. Um, and we're very, very excited to have her come on board. Students can make appointments with their school counselor through bookings, which will be posted in Canvas, the student Canvas page, and also on the Gainesville High School website once this rollover occurs and we can get the updated bookings links on there. Um, these are for student appointments to be made. Parents and guardians feel free to reach out versus e uh, via email, excuse me, or through the phone. You can reach out to your school counselors that way. Um, and we will be, you know, school counselors will serve your child for college and career academic and personal social issues, through services such as group counseling, um, some individual counseling, though it's not ther therapy in a, in a traditional sense, more like counseling triage, as well as classroom lessons. 
All right, Mr. Beach, if you don't mind going to the next slide. All right, so the all important question, when are you gonna get your schedules? Um, this is always a very popular question this time of the year. New students to Gainesville High School, those coming to orientation will get first draft copies of their orientation on August 18th. We will have paper copies available for them there. Um, all schedules will go live in parent and student view on Friday, August 19th. I do want to let you know, sometimes changes can occur even over the weekend. We're working hard all the way up until time that school starts on August 22nd. So please make sure you have your parent and your student view accounts ready to go. Um, and an appropriate use of your child's device would be to have student view on their phone so that they could see their schedules. Um, but official schedules are distributed on the first day of school during first period. It very well could match what is in their student view account, um, but we're going to give them paper copies just to kind of verify with them a double triple check to make sure everything is okay. So on that first day when your child walks into the building, make sure that they look at their student view. If your child does not have a device, we will have paper copies of what we call locators um, posted down by the counseling center, as well as staff around the building with copies of the of first block locators so students know how to get to their first block. Well, they were there, get, also get a paper copy of their schedule. So again, first dibs will be at orientation on the 18th, but you can also see in parent view on the 19th as well in parent and student view. All right, can you make schedule changes? This is another very popular question. Um, ske scheduling errors and conflicts are actually being corrected right now, and they will always be corrected if we have made a mistake on your child's credit, uh, uh, schedule, excuse me. If you see errors at orientation, please email the counselor that day. If there's any errors that you see, please make sure that that is addressed immediately. If you see errors on August 19th in parent and student view, you're welcome to email your school counselor, but we actually would really like to see you in person on the first few days of school, and your student would come down during the block of the error. So for example, your child has Algebra 1 in their schedule, but they took Algebra 1 last school year, and they're not supposed to be taking it again. So they have Algebra 1 in their schedule during fourth block. We're going to ask that they come down during fourth block so we can correct it then. And the reason that we ask for that is that that, that enables us to, to process students quickly and efficiently. And so we're not getting overwhelmed and we have lots of kids down um, in the counseling centers. We're trying to correct errors. So again, if you see errors or conflicts, we're fixing those things now. We will absolutely fix any errors that we make in schedules. Um, academic advising, so the collection of course requests started in February and went until about the end of May. We utilize course requests to, to hire staff, to purchase resources, and to build the school schedule. Um, it's a massive undertaking that takes a lot of time um, with the admin team putting the school schedule together. Because of that, and because our school schedule is so tightly built, because we have to be, um, making changes of for preferences is not something that we're able to honor at this point, whether for course or teacher preferences. Schedule changes, again, regarding course or teacher preferences cannot be honored at this point. Um, if we could please go to the next, well, next slide. Um, so I'm gonna go from schedules to immunizations. And there was a couple questions about this in the Q&A. If you look in parent and student view, this is a screenshot actually of my parent view app. You will see that there is a health component where you can check to see your child's compliance with immunizations. Um, per state law, there are some required immunizations for public school students. We've been calling and email families pretty regularly since the winter to let them know about their compliance. Please double check in parent view under health and then immunizations to check your child's compliance. Students who are not compliant will be excluded from school on August 22nd. So it's really important that if you've been getting any of these emails or contacts that you provide verification um, in regards to your child's immunization status. We do have a news item on the Gainesville High School website right now regarding immunizations if you'd like more information about that. All right, so what if, you're, if your student needs help while they're here at Gainesville High School? First, if it's general information, let's check that website. We do our best to get information on there, to get things posted so that, um, and up to date. Right now with this transition to the website, we're doing our absolute best to keep up, but please, we do ask for a little bit of patience with that. 
If it's about a class, particularly maybe your child's performance in that class, please start with their teacher. Your teacher is going to be able to tell you the on the ground things that are happening each day. You can also work with your student's team, and that includes the teacher, your child's school counselor, and their administrator. So we're all a team working together and trying to move in the same direction. If this is a personal or a social issue, you are welcome to reach out to the student, your student's school counselor, um, and we will can collaborate with any community resources that your family may be working with already. But again, I'd like to reiterate, we all have the same goal, which is for your student to be successful and to grow and to learn while they're here at Gainesville High School. Next slide, please. All right, I'm gonna hand it off to Dr. Scott. Uh, good evening, folks. Just a couple of a couple of points on advanced um, courses and advanced placement classes. Um, you may have heard of pre AP courses offered through College Board. the 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 name has changed now. We call them advanced, but the the content and the level of rigor are are the same of what you would have heard of pre AP in the past. Just watch for advanced on your schedule. AP classes rank among our most rigorous. It's college level content and, and we do annually, we caution students not to get overextended as they select AP classes for, for the coming year. Um, students often experience significant academic pressure, especially in the first few weeks of the school thinking, I'm over my head, I'm never gonna make it to June. The University of Virginia is just gonna call me now and say no. Um, However, annually, you know, we encourage students to stay in that struggle. Uh, it's it's new strategies for time management, workload management, communication with your teachers, um, organizing your day. You didn't enroll in multiple AP, cl AP classes without your parents, your teachers, your counselors reviewing your choices. And, and we, we're aware that these classes are difficult, but we want you to stay in the struggle for at least nine weeks. Um, give yourself a chance to surprise yourself. You'll learn to tap some internal and external sources of support. And you might even find students often do that you um, that that AP coursework is is perfectly appropriate for you. So if you get in over your head and you begin to feel like this this work is too rigorous and you're you're uncertain how you're going to make it, come and find us. Find your school counselor, talk to your teacher, come find any of us here presenting with you this evening, and we can walk you through um, a variety of strategies to help you hang in there for at least nine weeks before we make a decision about schedule changes. As for other gifted education classes, we have a variety of options. Uh, it's more than we have time really to, to, to present specifically for you tonight, but please come see us at Back to School Night for the full presentation um, on gifted education options. So if you're here and you're thinking about gifted education programming, come see us at Back to School Night. Um, one of the resources actually that's available for students who are who might be struggling in advanced placement is uh, a new county tutorial program called Paper. And I'm gonna kick it back to Mr. Beach to share some information about that with the next slide. There, it helps if I unmute myself all this time on Zoom and I still haven't figured that out. So uh, the, the school system, as well as the resources that we're providing at Gainesville High School, uh, Prince William County Schools has um, engaged with an organization called PAPER, and uh, that's an online tutoring service. Um, I've taken a screenshot from the Prince William County Schools website. Uh, parents, if you're cur curious, you can go there for more information. Um, we have a meeting, our school staff has a meeting with a representative from paper uh, later this week, and we're, we're hope, hopeful that we'll have somebody here during back to school night to uh, share additional information. But that's one resource. Uh, Khan Academy is another free resource that's available for our students to engage in practice. When I say tutoring, uh, tutorial type videos. Um, and then on the Prince William County Schools webpage, there are other resources that students can access that can support learning uh, along the way. So just a, a short plug for some of the things that are out there but that, that perhaps our families are unaware of at this time. Uh, from there, uh, I'm gonna move forward to Canvas. Canvas again is the student learning management system that uh, will be in use across Prince William County Schools. It's the web-based platform that our teachers will use to assign, uh, assign work, assign assignments um, for students to, for teachers to receive completed assignments from students 
um, provide feedback, et cetera. Many of our teachers will have embedded instructional videos or links to other resources, but Canvas is the, the primary tool that we'll use for students to, to access um, and, and manage the information flow that occurs in our classrooms. It's not intended to be an instructional platform during the day. And what I mean by that is our teachers will do uh, will use other forms of instruction than Canvas. Um, they will provide direct instruction. Um, students will be doing hands-on work. They may be doing work on, on act, actual paper as opposed to in the, the digital environment. So Canvas is a tool. It's a management tool for the flow of information, assignments, and feedback. Um, but it will be in use. And it does have, obviously, uh, features that allow us to see what students, what work students have engaged in or what assignments students have completed as we go through the year. As we talk about assignments, I want to stress a couple of things that, that will become normal uh, at Gainesville High School, and that is that um, our teachers aren't going to routinely engage in um, sequences of retesting. Um, our teachers are going to work to give students multiple opportunities to learn and show proficiency. So if a student isn't successful early in the school year, um, if, they, if they struggle with a specific concept or, or body of knowledge, and they don't show good evidence of that early in the school year, rather than a teacher just retesting and retesting and retesting, um, teachers are going to build in their planning cycles opportunities for students to relearn and then reassess during the class period. So students will receive multiple opportunities to relearn and reassess um, as teachers go through the instructional cycle and, and come back to revisit concepts that are taught earlier in the year, but maybe even at a higher level later in the year. So um, I, I want to stress that the retesting uh, for many of our students does not equate to quality learning. Uh, we want our teachers to really use assessments um, in their classrooms to inform the planning process, give students really good feedback, allow students to learn from that feedback, and then for our teachers to plan to reassess students at a later date. What that means is that students may, um, may earn grades early in the year that are accurate reflections of where the students are at that point in time. But when teachers see stronger evidence of mastery or proficiency, our teachers will have permission to go back and change grades from earlier in the year to demonstrate where students are in their learning at that point in time um, as students show greater proficiency. So a grade that a student earns in September by the end of the grading period could, could improve as a result of students' increased learning. And what we stress to our students, therefore, is that they have to show us what they know. They have to keep chipping away at the learning process um, and continue to, to demonstrate to their teachers the progress they've made for their teachers to simply go back and make sure the gradebook is reflective of where students are in their learning. And that, that cycle of relearning and reassessment will continue all the way through to the end of the school year. And, and our teachers have the opportunity, even in May and June, um, to change a first grading period grade as long as a student shows mastery against the standards that were taught earlier in the school year during that first grading period. Um, so please don't expect this cycle of come back after school and retest. We're, we're looking for deeper learning and then reassessment opportunities that happen during a regular class period as normal uh, sequences at Gainesville High School. Uh, Canvas and Student View. Um, again, the, the, the website has these two icons um, that allow students to engage with Student View, sign up for their account. Uh, there is password reset support on the website if students need it. And, uh, and again, Dan Nemro is our um, instructional technology coach that can help with uh, Student View and Canvas issues that may occur during the course of the school year. Um, our uh, instructional technology coach and our um, um, hardware, hardware specialist, Justin Ollie, will both be sit situated in our school cafeteria for the first couple of days of the school year. So if students run into roadblocks, our teachers will know that they can send them straight back for tech support so that very early in the school year, if there are roadblocks, our students can get past and move on to uh, learning without any, any time delay. Parent view, uh, parents, we can't stress enough, please engage in parent view. Uh, there was an email sent out today uh, by Prince William County Schools asking you to look for the, um, the, the start of the year packet, um, asking parents to go through and edit contact information as needed. 
uh, and obviously go through, follow the prompts in essence as you go through that new year packet. But I think that was launched to, today. So parents, please keep an eye out for it uh, and make sure you complete that. Our goal is to have um, all of those packets complete by the, the start of the school year. That might be unrealistic, but that's our goal. Um, we'll, be, we'll be pestering parents, obviously, as we go through the year to get updated information into parent view. Um, ultimately, so we're con contacting and communicating via the correct avenues and so that our students are safe. Um, so parents, please uh, please keep your eyes peeled for that and go ahead and fill out the, the necessary um, prompts that uh, Parent View provides. Um, if you have issues, uh, our school registrar is one of the people that can help reset your password. Uh, Ms. Nugent um, is out uh, for the remainder of this week, but is back uh, next week, and she is our point of contact with regards to parent parent view support. And uh, she did nice work with that last year in terms of getting our parents up and running. Class of 2023, Ms. Pomfret, do I pass back to you at this point? Sure, we can. Um, do you want to talk about the image that's on there first before I no, go into the details? That. So we, we engaged with a group of rising seniors. We had about 10 or 15 students who met with uh, Jostens rep. And the rep simply asked them, what do you want your graduation regalia to look like? What color do you want it to be? What other embellishments do you want? And the image uh, here is what our students selected. They, uh, they had a short list. Um, this was the most popular design that came out of that focus group. We pushed out three options via uh, a social media poll. And uh, Mrs. Yeo, would you, you manage this? This was the overwhelming most popular choice. Over half of our responses selected this as the graduation gown and stole for uh, graduation in June of 2023. So that's it. I guess this is the big reveal for the graduation robe uh, or gown and, and stole. Um, the graduation window has been set between June 5th and 14th in Princeton and County Schools. We will announce our graduation date as soon as we can. Um, Generally speaking, graduations uh, tend to fall close to the weekend, a Friday to Saturday kind of time frame. Um, I'm trying to drop a hint as to where we feel we may land as a school. Uh, once I have permission to, to share a firm date with our community, we'll get that out as quickly as we can because we know that's important for, for planning purposes for our parents and grandparents and other family members. Um, okay, this time I'll pass back to Mrs. Pomfret. Thank you. Um, for our class of 2023, we've sent out some correspondence recently about an application workshop that a couple of our school counselors will be hosting on August 11th, this Thursday, 2.30 to 4.30 in the Career Center. Um, we've asked kids to RSVP, but if they don't and they just show up, that's totally fine. If they need a little bit of extra help as they prepare for their applications, we are available during this time and, and throughout the fall, but this is a great time to get some concentrated support. Um, all of our seniors will do one-on-one -on -one meetings called senior interviews with their school counselor where they will review their graduation requirement, talk about their post-high school plan, and, and talk about what supports that they need so that they can feel successful. We also will do a lesson with those students. And parents, I'm going to send out some information about that lesson because we do need your help and support in ensuring that students are using the resources. There's a lot of information out there we know, and we try to streamline it. Um, but we do need um, students to pick up those tools as they figure out their plan for life after, after high school. Also, please mark your calendars for September 15th. We're going to have a senior information night that includes some tables. We'll have colleges, military recruiters. I believe we'll have Jostens there to help to set up some ordering for caps and gowns. They'll be there. We'll also have information sessions about Naviance and how to um, request transcripts. Um, another plug for that parent view back to school um, packet is it does include the FERPA permission that you complete so that your student can request transcripts. Until that's done, they cannot request transcripts through Naviance. Um, so there is a lot of information that's coming. Parents um, of, of seniors of 12th graders, please keep an eye on your email and we'll push out as much information as we can. That's all we uh, had planned for this evening. Um, thank you team for answering almost 70 Q&A questions. Hopefully parents, we, we, we kept up and gave you the information you needed there. Um, 
Likewise, parents, hopefully the information we provided, um, if not new, was a good reminder or, or pointed you in the right direction as far as your questions were concerned. We had close to 300 families here tonight. I think that's a record for us. So um, again, we, we're, we're optimistic that this is of use to our families. We'll, we'll do webinars again later in the year as we go, um, as we feel there's a need to convey information. A couple of questions that were frequently asked, um, I think probably of our parents, from rising freshmen, our students typically will go from class to class with a backpack. Most of our students do not use lockers. They just carry their stuff from class to class. They're permitted to do that. Students, if you wanna use a locker, you're absolutely welcome to, and we will assign one to you. Um, lots of parking questions. Um, we don't have reserved parking spaces. Um, hot off the press, Mrs. Yeward, I'm sorry for this curveball. You answered one question and I've changed the response. Um, we are going to designate one section of our um, senior, of our parking lot near the tennis courts for seniors, so there's a little bit of a senior privilege. We just need to um, notate that section of the parking lot, but otherwise there won't be any um, reserved parking. Students will just generically buy parking passes. Um, we've had a lot of questions about clubs and activities. Um, we'll, we'll communicate through announcements, through Twitter, um, and other avenues when clubs and activities have kickoff meetings for the year. So our students are typically in the know more than we are. Uh, Mr. Rittenauer, our director of student activities, um, will be happy to meet with students who wish to start a club or activity and uh, students will receive information about how that happens or how that works through the student handbook early in the school year. So parents just, um, just know that your, your students are gonna get all of that information again, as the school year begins about existing clubs that are starting up for the year. Um, there, there really is no limit of space at this time. And then clubs that they wish to start, we'll, we'll coach them through them. Uh, we'll coach students through that process again through Mr. Ritt now. So um, we're, we're excited. We can't wait to see our students show up uh, next week. And obviously then on the first week of school, um, we have worked since October to hire the, the, the finest professionals, teachers and support staff that we can find. And, and, and I'm, I can't stress that point enough that we get to work here at Gainesville High School with some of the finest educators in the country. And I have never seen so many teachers in a building this early in the summer. Half of our classrooms were already set up and ready to go because our teachers are so excited to get back to work here at Gainesville High School and be part of the thing that's building. Um, so parents and students, we're, we're excited to see you. We're looking forward to seeing you. And uh, I really think this school year is going to um, allow our students to, to march back towards normalcy and have a really successful experience at Gainesville High School. We're going to hang out for a couple of minutes, um, closing out as many of the Q&A um, questions as we can, and then we'll end in uh, two or three minutes. Uh, but again, thanks, everybody, for being here. Have a good evening.